Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Tesden Figaro. Good morning, Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy. My mic sounds great. Your mic yeah. does sound great, Tess. <laughs> we are broadcasting from out of town this morning, so it sounds a little uh, crazy. So let's jump right I into it. I promise you. I just, I just want to tell everybody who's watching us on uh, BET this morning, I promise you we're a nationally syndicated multi-million dollar morning show. I promise you we are. Don't let this fool you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, let's start. What are we starting with, Tess? Well, we want to give an update on the Chicago uh, mom and 14-year-old son story. Uh, there's an update on the story about the Chicago mom, Clarissa, Clarissa Hood, and her 14-year-old son. Uh, both were charged with first-degree murder. Yesterday, the charges were dropped. Let's listen to the updated report we'll talk about it on the other side. After video has surfaced over the weekend um, showing Carlicia Hood violently attacked inside of a restaurant, that video now viral on social media. Now, Hood and her 14-year-old son were released from custody just a short time ago after being charged with murder. The state's attorney's office saying, quote, based upon the facts, evidence, and the law, we are unable to meet our burden of proof. The incident took place inside a restaurant at 116th and Halstead. Hood was picking up food while her son was in the car. Prosecutors say she and 34-year-old Jeremy Brown had gotten into an argument. She then texted her son to come inside. The son stood in the doorway as his mom was punched three times in the face. Prosecutors say the 14-year-old shot Brown in the back, and as he ran outside, Brown that is, the teen kept shooting while being told by his mother to do so. Brown died as a result. Round of applause, first of all, for the charges being dropped. That's number one. Come on, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And, and what were they charged with, Ted? Why did they feel like they couldn't meet the, the burden of proof? Yeah, uh, so both were charged uh, with first degree murder. Uh, Ms. Hood was also charged with delinquency of a minor. Uh, but for the sake of time, I want to unpack a little bit, uh, spend some time on first degree murder charges so that people can at least have an understanding. There's a lot of conversation about this on social media. And shout out to everybody on social media that's been pushing this video. It went viral. Uh, even the media had to say that, you know, because the video went viral and that evidence came out, it, it made a huge impact, you know, on this case. So in Illinois, uh, the state must prove that you intended to kill kill your alleged victim or do or do him or her great bodily harm that you knew that the act you intended to commit carried uh, carry with it a strong probability that it will gravely injure or kill your alleged victim and that you killed your victim while committing or attempting a to commit a forcible felony now the key is with this and some folks may be listening and say well all of those things seem to apply but the key is what this is remember prosecution must uh be able to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt uh, and be able to show that there was no reasonable explanation uh for the person to you know basically murder uh, the guy and obviously with this case when we see uh the video there is a reasonable explanation, Clear, reasonable on, explanation. right on why they feel that but i, I just want to point out remember the judge uh that uh sentence that gave them the bond hearing disagreed so this is where an interpretation of the law comes into play you can have a judge that mm. thinks one thing that says hey he was fleeing uh the judge had right. the had the right. evidence and said that hey when he was fleeing that's when you committed the first degree murder and then you can have somebody else you know say something totally different so two other things i want to point out and i'm gonna toss it back to you guys i just want to point out that the family is insisting uh that she did not instruct uh, her son to do any of these things and they want to make a point that people know that he was an honor roll student uh that she was licensed right. to carry and that they had no previous uh, background in anything that, close to this. That, that young man did nothing wrong. You know, we have all of these nothing conversations wrong. about, uh, you know, pr protect all women. But I mean, more, that's not what that wasn't just a, a, a woman. That was his mother. You know what I mean? Like and somebody looked mom, at this, absolutely. That's right. Somebody looked at this situation and just saw it for what it was. Yo, this guy, random stranger swings on this dude's mom. This dude got, had his mom's legal firearm and decided to use it. 14 years old like that. I, I, I can't right. see a jury convicting that young man. I, I, don't, I don't see how they would have ever won this case. Not at, not at all. Like you said, that man punched his mother three times in the face. What Come was on, he supposed man. to do? Sit there and watch? And the guy, was, you know, I seen the video of the guy. The guy was a big guy. It wasn't like he was a little, small, scrawny guy. He was a big guy. So he protected his mom. And I don't see anything wrong with that. That's not right. At all. That's what I said. An old fool? 
that, that's my whole thing. Like, you know, what happened? What, what causes a situation to escalate that much? How come nobody was able to intervene and talk that dude off the ledge? How come he couldn't talk himself off the ledge? Why did he feel in that moment he had to project whatever pain and hurt he was going through onto that woman? Like, he went in there with a burger and came out with some wings. Mm-hmm. And and just if you mind if I get on a quick little soapbox for a second, uh, you know, I, people that follow me on my Instagram page at Tesla Figaro, you know, I, they watch this family really trying to get this story out, you know, to the media. And so I'll be talking to some folks today on why they did not tag me, you know, in this story. And so I just want to point out, you know, that I'm, I'm sitting up here for a reason to make sure that we have our voices and our voices are heard. This family was desperately trying to get this information out. And I can't just depend on algorithms, you know, to tell the story. If you see a story like this and you see somebody's trying to get the message out to the media don't just click like that's to me just like standing by it imagine if if ever if nobody's if people just didn't stand by with this case it could have had a different solution so tag me send it to me i can't catch everything i can't catch every inbox i get but don't sit here and just click like and scroll and say oh that's unfortunate you know and, and keep it moving let's work together we are our only media and believe it or not the breakfast club does have eight million uh listeners per month that listen live on the radio 10 to 12 million that listen on the podcast and, and BET is in over 90 million homes. This is a national syndicated radio show, believe it or not. So when we get that information, when you guys see that, send it to me so that I can, so that we can get it out to the people. And then one last thing. Uh, oh, okay, just, I know, want, just, just want to correct you on one thing. So. Club podcast is fifteen to twenty million dollars. Okay, <laughs> give them the math, okay. we, got, we got, we got to go. We got to, we got to pay yeah. some bills so we can make sure we stay here. All right, we can tell you <laughs> in a couple minutes to, to update. Where the money? Get going it off your chest. It don't sound like money going to this show. Five eight five one zero five one. If you need to vent, call us up right now. Again, eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Uh, we sound a little crazy this morning because we're broadcasting remote, but we're still going to get through this front page news. Let's get right into it with Tesla Figaro. Good morning, Tez. Good morning, DJ NV Charlemagne the God. What's up, Tez? Much, Let's jump maybe right into AI it. Maybe AI can fix this. Maybe this is something AI can fix. Remote okay. uh, technology. I, I, I don't know about that. Maybe Alan Iverson can fix this one, but I don't know about AI fixing this one. No, you know what? Speak that we do. That's what we need. Practice. 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 Clearly, when we on the road, when we on the road doing remote, uh, remote, remote gigs, we need some practice between us and the engineers and the producers and everybody to make it sound better. I tell you, it looked like we in the same room. It looks like some shade room. You just we just caught each other because your blinds and my blinds look like we're in the same room in the same blinds. Yo, man, stop, stop daydreaming. Stop projecting your perverted ass daydreams on all listeners. Yo, shut up. All right, where we starting, Tess? Well, happy Pride. Um, We (laughs) want to. (laughs) Still Pride Month. Let's do a quick update uh, on the Florida story. Uh, Again, has social media uh, all buzzing on Susan Lorenge. Want to get this quick news out. Florida officials have declined to file second degree murder charges against Susan Lorenge. That is the woman accused of shooting and killing her neighbor, A.J. Owens, through a closed door, citing insufficient evidence. Now, State Attorney Bill Glaston announced Uh, at a Monday news release that the state would charge her with one count of manslaughter with a firearm and one count of assault. And again, I just want to repeat that because a lot of folks uh, saw on social media where they said, oh, she's not being charged and thought she was getting completely away with it. And of course, we do want the murder charge, but she is being charged with manslaughter. So to make sure everybody, you know, understands that difference. Now, again, you may remember this case. We talked about it on Front Page News. Uh, Charlemagne uh, obviously gave uh, Susan a donkey of the day as well. And this is where, you know, her her children were playing near her home. Owens went over to talk to the neighbor. She shot through the door. Now, the state attorney said, quote, as deplorable as the defendant's actions were in this case, there is insufficient evidence to prove the required element of second degree murder. And the required element that he's talking about is a depraved mind. Now, if convicted of manslaughter, uh, she can face up to 15 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. And just to compare the difference on, you know, why folks are so upset, when you look at manslaughter, that is a minimum of 16 and a half years up to life. So we are talking about a, a big difference in time here. Mm-hmm. Well, how, how, can, how can she admit all of these things in her arrest affidavit and they not say it's premeditated murder? Did you see a lot of the things that she admitted in her arrest affidavit? Yeah, we did. And and that's, again, that's why so many people are upset. You know, what did they do? What type of interviewing did they do? What type of evidence 
Did they have, uh, you know, some folks, again, arguing on the other side, they would say that, you know, although we see those things, how can you prove it? Who were the witnesses? Were they credible? You know, was this something that you can prove? And so one thing about me, um, I've worked on a lot of Florida cases. Sometimes when you overcharge, the person gets away with it completely, like what we saw with George Zimmerman. We also saw that with the Casey Anthony, Anthony case as well, the overcharging. So, again, I'm not... Uh, proposing or, or, or promoting that this that this woman should not get murdered uh, but I did want to point that out there that uh, sometimes it is a legal strategy now I just want to go over quickly what a depraved mind is because that is the language uh, you know that's being circulated and that is right. uh, when a person uh, is committed uh, without any premeditated design by an act dangerous to a, another or a depraved mind showing no regard for life. And again, to Charlemagne's point, premeditated, this woman talked about, you know, what she would do. She bought a weapon. She talked about, you know, she made a lot of racial slurs. But again, it comes down to what uh, are those prosecutors able to prove? And so when you look at manslaughter, that is uh, conducting and negligence uh, that result, resulted in the death of another person. So well, she, I'm, I'm looking at the arrest affidavit. She admitted that she bought the gun for uh, A.J. Owens after a previous mm -hmm. encounter. She admitted to researching staying your ground laws in the past. They have eyewitnesses that said after she assaulted A.J.'s nine-year-old son with roller skates, she threatened A.J.'s 12-year-old mother with an umbrella and said, go get your mother. She admitted to calling the kids racial slurs. Witnesses said that she called the children slaves and told them this isn't the Underground Railroad. She Jesus. admitted to throwing roller skates at AJ's kids. She uh, lied to the police about the timeline of her 911 call, the police and the shooting. I mean, like, damn. Yeah, this is open and shut case, it sounds like. <laughs> I mean, damn. Mm hmm yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, that's why we want to continue to put the pressure on them. And again, I do believe, uh, you know, should be second degree murder. Uh, so, you know, again, like I always say, Charlemagne, push the line politics until something happens. Let's also remember, again, uh, when you look at your state attorneys, you look at your district attorneys, these are elected seats. Even when we talk about the seat earlier, just uh, the Chicago case, I want to point out that that judge Dawkins was appointed. So when you look at, you know, these positions and who decides who gets charged and who actually goes to jail and if they get you know what happens with that we're talking about elected seats so again continue to push the line for this family uh, but that is the difference uh, between the two and since you talked about staying your ground I just want to give a point again because I know people keep bringing that up that this was not a stand your ground case even the sheriff said it was not a stand your ground so stand the ground has nothing to do with it if they did she wouldn't even be uh, charged for the manslaughter so that's where we at with uh, well at thank with you that. so much Tess all right, now, when we come back, that was front page news. We sound a little off this morning. Charlemagne and, and I are trying to broadcast remote. It sounds bad. Our uh, mind, because they're saying the service, phone services is choppy this morning, so they're trying to get the phone service back online, and Charlemagne just sounds like you're in a toilet bowl. Yeah, and I got this, you know, handheld microphone, like I'm in a talent show, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, y'all just threw me on stage and told me, do a dedication to Tina Turner, and just threw me a microphone, you know what I mean? And they got me just out here looking, sounding and looking crazy, okay? Yeah, well... When we come back, we're going to do some of the best of some of our throwback interviews. When we come back, Boosie's badass who's home now. So we're going to kick it with Boosie. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club on BET. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.